Okay, good morning, all of you. Uh, we will see continuation for study topic uh, types of materials based on electrical conductance property. So, based on electrical conductance, already we have some idea. The materials will be classified into three categories. One is conductors, semiconductors, and insulators. Just I will give you uh, one more time explanation. Already we discussed in solid state. Okay, see that one conductors first one. Uh, what is the meaning of conductors anybody? What is the meaning of conductors? Conductors means is a material uh, yes, which allows the electrical energy through which is falling as a conductor. Is a material which will pass electrical energy through that material is falling as a conductor. Can you give the example for conductors? Like metals, example. Uh, nickel, copper, zinc, these all will undercome uh, which one? Uh, metals and also alloys. Alloys is also example for the conductors. Now, I will tell second category, it is nothing but uh, insulators. What is the meaning of insulators? Its conducting power will be zero. Means, is a material uh, through that material, there is no chance to pass electrical energy. Is a material which will not allow the electricity through that material is calling as a insulators. Can you give the example for the insulators? Yes, uh, just I will ask you one question. What is the responsibility to pass the electrical energy through that material? What is helpful to pass the electrical energy through that material? Yes, it may, may ions should require or free electrons should require. Either ions or mobile electrons are acting as a energy carriers. Then only energy will be passing from one place to another place. Then only they are calling as conductors. Here no chance to pass. Why? Yes, sir. In this material, there is no ions and no free electrons. That's why no chance to carry the energy from one place to another place in that material. That's why it is calling as a insulator. Can you give the example for this one? Yes, wood. If you can take wood, yes, is it giving any shock? No. And if you can take sand, glass. yes, sir. If you can take glass and also plastics, if you can take all of them, there is no chance to allow the electricity through that material because of lack of ions and mobile electrons. And uh, I want to tell third category is nothing but semiconductors. In solid state, we land use concept regarding semiconductors. Semiconductors means what? Yes, it is a one type of the material. Through that, you are sending an electrical energy. Sometimes, sometimes it may allow the electrical energy to it, or sometimes huh, it may not allow the electricity through that one. Means, some sometimes it is acting as a conductor, sometimes it is acting as a insulator. Such behavior having materials is calling as a semiconductors. Can you give the example for this one? Yes, silicon and germanium. Silicon and germanium. Huh? Now, one more new word is coming here. Superconductors. Superconductors. I think you have some idea. In that name only answer is there. Conductivity power will be very high. Means, is a materials, is a materials in which resistance is becoming zero. There is no opposite to flow the current through that material. Automatically what happening? Its conductance will become infinite. The resistance of the material will be zero. Automatically what happening? Too much energy will be passing through that material. Its conductivity power will be infinite. Such materials only we are calling as superconductors. Superconductor means is a material which has its resistance will be zero and its conductance power will be infinite. Where very much conductivity will be there, the switch calling as a superconductors. Generally, metals uh, will work out as a superconductors at low temperature. Generally, 0 to 5 Kelvin temperature. In one time, I think in Nita J.E. asked this question. At what temperature range metals are acting as a superconductors? At what range? Uh, 0 to 5 Kelvin means very, very low temperature. So generally which metals are acting as a superconductors but not all metals. Some special metals is there, aluminium and mercury. Both are acting as a superconductor under range of 0 to 5 Kelvin. Why? Why? 
Okay, generally, for example, if you take any metal rod, in the metal rod, what will be there? Positively charged particles is there, mobile electrons is there. Okay, you take that metal rod at a very low temperature. What happening? Whatever electrons will be there, they are moving with comfortable speed. With comfortable speed means what happening? It's passing maximum electrical energy through that material. And no, you take the same material high temperature. Problem will come. Anybody? At low temperature, it is acting as a superconductor. Now, I take the same body at high temperature, around 50 degrees Celsius temperature. It's not a superconductor. Its conductivity will be decreasing. Why? Ah, means? Yes, whatever electrons will be there, its kinetic energy will be increasing by taking that heat energy. Automatically, what happening? Electron will do unwanted uh, collisions with uh, among electrons. Yes, automatically, kinetic energy of electron will be increasing. With that high kinetic energy, the electron will collide with the electron. In that process, what happening? They are forgetting their duties. Okay, instead of carrying energy, they are fighting together. Automatically, what happening? Energy passing through that material will be come down. Means its conductivity power will be decreasing at high temperature. That's why the metals of superconductors, a few metals of superconductors at very low temperature, around 0 to 5 Kelvin. And some uh, special alloys will be there. They are also acting as a superconductors even at high temperature, around 150 Kelvin temperature also. Pure metals 0 to 5 Kelvin are acting as a superconductors, but some alloys even at a high temperature they are acting as a superconductors around 150 Kelvin temperature. So, the pure metals the alloys are little bit good even at a high temperature. This is the information you have to understand. What is the meaning of superconductors? It is a material which has zero resistance and conductance will be too much, means infinite. Huh? It is calling as superconductors. Now, I will explain very nice question huh? you have to see very carefully types of, types of conductors, types of conductors, the very nice concept is coming here, mainly we have two types of the conductors, one is metallic conductors, metallic conductors, uh, this is important for competitive, another one is Electrolytic conductors. Electrolytic conductors. Uh, I will give a huge explanation. You have to see, observe very carefully. First of all, I am explaining about the metallic conductors. Metallic conductors. Already you have some idea. Anyway, the body allows the electricity to that material in case of metals. So that's only I am writing here. Metallic conductors we are discussing in case of only metals. Okay, if you take a metallic rod, you take it through that material, we are sending electrical energy. The electrical energy around it will be passing through that material. So it's calling as a metallic conductor. My question in case of metallic conductor, which are energy carriers? Which are energy carriers? Means which carries the energy from one end to another and in case of metals. Yes, very good Amar. In case of metals, positively charged particles is there, electrons is there. Why? Because metals are electro positive element, they always lose electrons from its balanceation. After that, electrons is liberating. So electrons cannot sit free. Why? Very lightweight particle and very smallest particle. This way they are travelling uh, through the gaps among the metal atoms. Automatically they will carry the energy from one place to another place. That's why in case of metallic conductors, energy carriers are nothing but mobile electrons are nothing but mobile electrons are nothing but free electron. Anyway, in case of metallic conductors, electrons are the energy carriers, so we are calling them also as electronic conductors electronic conductors because in metallic conductors electrons are the energy carriers so we are calling them also like electronic conductors can we give the example yes you can give so many like iron nickel copper zinc these all will undergoes this category now one more point i am telling here observe very carefully in case of metallic conductors in which phase they are acting as a conductors even, even in a solid phase, solid state, they are good conductors. Is it right or no? They are conductors. 
any liquid, the liquid or the solution field, they are conductors because ions are moving freely. That's why okay. But even in solid state also, they are acting as a conductors because in solid phase also, electrons can freely move from one place to another place because electrons are energy carriers. They are very small and they are very lightweight. That's why they can causes gaps among the metal atoms. Next question I want to tell here: in case of metallic conductors, the conductance of the metal rod is depending upon which one. is depends upon nature of the metal nature of the metal all metals are having same conductance no definitely its conductivity power is depending upon the nature of or type of the metal atom so which properties will influence the conductance power anybody so this conductance z is directly proportional to number of valence electrons in that metal is it right or no Only one valence electron is there, it carries very less energy. Three valence electrons is there, then it carries energy will be more. That's why what I'm telling you, conductance of metallic conductor is directly proportional to number of valence electrons. Can you tell some other characteristics like this? It is there. Uh, uh, tell me anybody. Any some other characteristics will influence this one? It is inversely proportional to temperature. means metallic conductance is inversely proportional to temperature anybody what yes you take an one metal rod just now i explained reason metal rod you take it at 25 degrees celsius temperature its conductance will be fine you take an same metal rod at 50 degrees celsius temperature its conductance will be just to high temperature low conductance low temperature high conductance why Yes, sir. Just now I told you know, at high temperature, what problem is coming on? At high temperature, kinetic energy of electron will be going on increasing. With that high kinetic energy, electrons are doing unwanted collisions instead of carrying energy. Automatically, its conductance power will be come down for the metals at the high temperature. That's why in case of metals, conductance is inversely proportional to temperature. It's a very nice point. You ask the question. In case of metallic conductor, as the temperature is increasing, why conductance will be decreasing? In case of metallic conductor, as the temperature is increasing, kinetic energy of mobile electron is increasing. As the kinetic energy of mobile electron is increasing, they are involving in the unwanted collisions instead of carrying energy from one place to another place. Automatically, conductance power of metallic stones will be or rods will be decreasing. All of you clear? Under the metallic conductors. Why passing electrical energy through this material? Is there any chemical reactions? Is there any chemical reactions will be possible? No, just uh, the electrical energy is carried by electrons. That's it. That's why in case of metallic conductors, there is no, there is no chemical reactions. There is no chemical reactions means there is no new substances or there is no new products. These are not important. You see, it means sir, uh, is there any changes in the metal rod mass, whether increasing or decreasing by passing electricity through it? No. Just uh, the energy will be passed by electrons. That's it. There is no further changes in the metallic rod. That's why no chemical reaction, no new product. That's why no change in the mass of metal rod. So did you got my point or no? Yes. Now I will explain second one. It is nothing but uh, electrolytic conductors. Electrolytic uh, conductors. a ah, very nice point ma huh? have also very carefully what is the meaning of electrolytic conductors in that name only answer is there yes you take an electrolyte electrolyte means what salt or acid or base it should be involving in the means after it are dissolving it should be gives ions you take an electrolyte in solid state is it acting as a conductor or not i take an nacl salt i take an is it conductor nacl crystal i take an is it conductor no that's what i write no electrolyte in solid state it is acting as a insulator why i first here for first topic solid state solid nacl is a bad conductor why yes sir in solid phase there is no ions or no ions for movement down or Simple, simple definition. No ions are moving. Yes, ions is there, but not moving. There is no movement. There is no transfer. There is no transfer transfer. Okay, but same electrolyte, same electrolyte. I take it in either molten state or solution phase. 
it is acting as a conductor why what is the meaning of molten take an acl don't add any solvent just to take an acl keep on heating it's becoming liquid that is calling as molten without adding solvent the material is becoming liquid it means that is calling as a molten state either if you take electrolyte either in molten state or by adding solvent you are getting solution in this case it is becoming like a good conductor why yes sir means uh, in this uh, what happening uh, free moving of ions will be there free moving of ions yes because of free movement of of ions they will carry energy from one place to another place they are acting as a conductors electrolyte conductor conductors means when we take an electrolyte either in molten state or solution phase they are acting as a good conductors due to due to presence of free moving nature of the ions they will carry energy from one place to another place are you getting or no yes next question next point i want to tell here if you take a first example nacl only in solid phase or same nacl you taken in molten phase or aqueous medium they are becoming like and a plus plus cl minus moving very freely because it is liquid phase liquid phase means the ions are can move free okay now in case of electrolytic conductors which are acting as energy carriers yes here energy carriers or ions so we can call it as ionic conductors ionic conductors okay in which phase they are acting as a, a conductors yes these are acting as a conductors either in molten phase or solution solution means you can use water as a solvent or some other chemicals as a solvent is not a matter aqueous means only water will be solved okay they are acting as a conductors either in molten phase or in a solution phase next question i am asking here also conductance conductance is depending upon which one nature of the electrolyte yes you take an nacl some conductance will be there you take an uh, magnesium chloride conductance will be changing this is why i am telling you in case of electrolytic conductor conductance is depending upon nature of the electrolyte very nice points is coming up so we are very careful in case of electrolytic conductors conductance is directly proportional to concentration of the solution is it right why yes sir more concentration more ions more ions more passing current that's why we have five molar concentration has more conductance than the two molar solution because more ions more conductance will be there also careful is directly proportional to charge on ions charge of ions just i will give you one clarity to you you take an na plus is there mg plus 2 is there or uh, in which case we have more uh, conductance yes that only you know conductance is directly proportional to charge of ions one as you more charge more charge means it will carry some more electrons that's why mg plus you have these all bits these all are bits you given an acl and mgcl which which electrolytic solution has more conductance because of uh, more charge mgcl is having more charge, more conductance power it is directly proportional to size of ions size of ions how can you explain size of ions means for example you have k plus and na plus okay which is bigger size first you tell me hydrogen lithium sodium potassium potassium is a bigger in size and sodium is a smaller in size what is telling potassium ions is having more conductance than the na plus why why did you observe solvation effect what is the meaning of solvation effect between solute and solvent attraction ha uh, okay indirectly is nothing but hydration effect hydration effect means what between solute particle and water attraction like that between solute particle and solvent attraction is calling as a solvation effect in case of small size particle solvation effect is more why why these are small size particles so small size particles means they are easily goes into the solvent means they are having more interaction with the solvent particle whenever they are having more interaction with solvent strong solvation effect because of strong solvation effect is it passing through fast means they are strongly held with solvent no is it passing uh, very fast no that's why its conductance will be less 
bigger particle interaction with solvent will be less interaction with solvent will be less then they are free they are free means they can move it fast this part big size particles who are having more bond content conductance than the small size particle and uh, 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 viscosity of the solvent is also factor here you take an nacl in water nacl in oil where conductance will be more water why after dissolving a uh, uh, solvent viscosity will be less because of less viscosity ions can move freely that's why we can write here is inversely proportional to uh, viscosity of solvent yes, it is always and it directly proportional to temperature why in case of uh, electrolytic conductors the conductance is directly proportional to temperature yes sir you take a uh, one example i will give you for this one you take it ab is the electrolyte at 25 degrees celsius temperature same ab you take it at 50 degrees celsius temperature okay at low temperature for example 5 ab particle is becoming like 5a plus 5b minus you are maintaining more temperature more temperature is what happening more ionization will be going on out of a given particle 10 ab particle is becoming 10a plus and 10b minus what happening in case of electrolytic conductor as the temperature is increasing ionization increasing as the ionization increasing number of ions increasing as the number of ions increasing conductance will be also going on increasing did you got my point sir? and uh, see some other points i want to tell is there any chances for uh, chemical reactions is there any chances for chemical reaction 100 percent why because uh, you take it one electrolyte you take it like uh, which particles NaCl solution you take it okay you are giving which one power connection power will be passing through the solution or no yes okay after passing like this the power will be passing throughout the material because of presence of Na plus plus Cl minus they won't maintain calm they are going in chemical reaction towards oppositely charged electrodes Na plus particle going towards cathode Cl minus goes to means uh, in case of electrolytic conductance uh, what happening chemical reactions will be going on ok yes or no chemical reactions will be going on means what happening a uh, uh, new products will be forming is it correct or no yes new products are forming these are important things so under electrolytic conductance uh, by passing electricity through the electrolyte chemical reactions will be going on under chemical reactions uh, we are getting some new products will be forming this will be coming at the loss of uh, end of the electrochemistry token all of you got my point yes now i will explain one more thing it is nothing but uh, types of electrolytes types of electrolytes uh, already we studied in first year salt hydrolysis we have three types of electrolytes we have i am telling very clearly first one strong electrolytes strong electrolyte in that pneumonia answer is there what is the meaning of strong electrolytes yes sir it is an electrolyte means it can allow the electrical energy to it very much means is a, a conductor's materials or it is an electrolyte through that passing electrical energy will be high why passing electrical energy through the electrolyte will be high yes very good because of presence of more number of ions when we are getting more number of ions extent of ionization will be more or less ionization is what breaking the breaking will be more or less then we are getting more number of ions yes more number of ions we are getting means extent of ionization extent of ionization it should be equal to 100 percent how much you are taking that much is undergoing ionization then we are getting more ions more ions means more energy passing through it such materials is calling as a strong electrolyte strong electrolyte means is nothing but electrolyte uh, through that material uh, too much electrical energy will be passing because of more number of ions means in the electrolyte extent of ionization will be 100 percent 100 percent means how much your electrolyte you are taking that will completely undergoing ionization yeah this possible in which case strong acids strong bases and salts 
Can you give the example for strong acids? All inorganic acids like yes, very good H2SO4, HCl, and HFO3. And strong bases, all first A group elements and a little bit of second A group elements, hydroxides like NaOH, KOH, what did I told? And barium hydroxide down in the second group, barium hydroxide. So all strong bases generally. Yes, top element hydroxides all the strong bases. And salts, you know very well. NaCl, KCl, yes. If you take any among them, what whatever, how much you are taking, that will completely undergoing ionization. Then more ions, more power passing through it, then it is falling as a strong electrolyte. Now comes to weak electrolyte. Weak electrolyte. What is the meaning of weak electrolyte? Yes. Passing electrical energy through it will be low or less. Why? Why? Yes, sir. Less number of less number of ions will be there. Why less number of ions? Yes, sir. Extent of ionization. Extent of ionization is less than 100 percentage. You are taking 100 molecules. 100 molecules cannot undergo in dissociation. Less than 100 molecules is undergoing dissociation. Then availability of number of ions will be less. Then its conductance will be also less. So can I give one example? For example, how it is going on? You take an AB chemical. Yes, first it is undergoing dissociation like A plus plus B minus. They won't remain like that. Again, they combine together and becoming starting chemical. Means a breaking is going on, again reformation is going on. That's why availability of number of ions will be less. Okay, you can see here what happening. If you take a XY chemical, strong electrolyte, what happening? It is completely undergoing dissociation like X plus plus Y minus. Now what chance to come back? But we are not like breaking again and reforming. That's why the extent of dissociation or ionization will be less than 100 percentage. Then availability of number of ions will be less. Then conductance will be also less. Can you give the example? Yes, very good amount. Weak acids and uh, uh, weak bases. Already you have some idea regarding weak uh, acids and weak bases. All organic acids are weak acids. Can you give the example? H2CO3, uh, carbonic acid. And organic acid means formic acid HCOOH and acetic acid CH3COOH, all organic acids. And what is the weak base example? We did already uh, uh, ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide is the one of the best weak base. Uh, how it is happening? Just uh, you take an ammonium hydroxide, you take an ammonium hydroxide, you take an 100 molecule. 100 molecule cannot undergo dissociation. First, it may undergo dissociation like. NH4 plus plus OH minus. Again, they will recombine together and becoming like uh, NH4 OH. Due to this process, number of available ions will be less, then uh, power passing through the material will be less, as we call it as weak electrolyte. Can we explain the third category? Non electrolyte. Non electrolyte. What is the meaning of non electrolyte? Electrical energy cannot pass through the material. Why? There is no ions. No ions. Why no ions? No ionization. No ionization. Are you getting or no? Yes. Can you give an example? Yes. You take an urea solution. Take urea in water. What happening? Dissolves. Everything is okay. But give power supply. You cannot give shock. Why? Why? Urea formula. NH2 CO NH2. If you dissolve urea in water, undergoing dissolving through hydrogen bonding, but not ionization. Yes, in CO O can involve in interaction with the H of water. And if you can take N, he is involving in the interaction with hydrogen of the water where we are dissolving through hydrogen bonding. The chemical will undergoing into the water, then undergoing dissolving, but not gives ions. There is no ions, there is no energy passing. That's why it's calling as a non electrolyte. Can you give one more example? Glucose solution. Glucose solution. Formula C6H12O6. Same thing. It's also undergoing uh, dissolving, but it's, it's, not, it's not a conductor. Uh, why? Because after dissolving also, it won't give any ions. That's why there is no transfer. Which one? 